Well, as many of you have probably already heard, the inevitable has taken place. The uh, P5 Plus One and Iran have come to a negotiated uh, agreement to uh, alter and curtail Iran's nuclear program. Some of the uh, details have come out, but it is still newly or in the early stages of implementation. And even though it is probably a done deal, the uh, U.S. must, or I should say Mr. Obama, still needs to get it past Congress. But I'm sure he feels, and it's been reported that he believes that he has the votes in order to do that. But that is really the major hurdle that will come in the uh, coming months. But here's something that just came in out of Stratford. Uh, in fact, just came out. It says, Iran accepts uh, accepted a snapback mechanism under which some sanctions could be reinstated in 65 days if Tehran violates the nuclear deal reached with six major powers July 14th. A UN weapons embargo will reportedly remain in place for five years with a ban on purchasing missile technology remaining for another eight years. The country's nuclear uh, facilities would remain operational under the deal with research and development continuing on key centrifuges Iran's state-run IRNA reported. Oil prices fell more than a dollar after news of the deal was broke. So that's another benefit that we'll probably see in the coming months that uh, with more oil coming online by Iran you'll see a drop in oil prices. Now Iran has said that they would not dump a tremendous amount of oil all at once on the market uh, because that would cause it to make a considerable uh, plunge. But we'll have to wait and see what happens on that. I mean, you know, anything could happen. But I do look for a drop in oil prices in the coming days. And this will probably uh, continue throughout the remainder of 2015 and probably early in 2016. Now, as I've said, all the details have not been disclosed as of yet. But here is an analysis that, again, uh, uh, Stratford has given. It says, Iran and the group of six major powers reached an agreement July 14, after a two-week extension and more than 20 months of negotiations. But the deal is really the culmination of more than a decade of careful diplomacy at times, carefully conducted behind the scenes, following the revelation of the Iranian deal, uh, or nuclear program, in 2002. So this has been going on for a long time behind the scenes, as many of you probably know. In the coming months, the U.S. Congress, the Iranian Supreme Leader, and the U.N. Security Council will have to review and approve the deal, which exchanges phased sanctions relief uh, for guarantees and verification of Iran's commitment to a peaceful nuclear program. Now, as Mr. Uh, Obama has said, he got up early this morning and, and told us about the deal. But he said this is not a deal based on trust, but a deal based on verification. And by no means is this a perfect deal. Don't think for a second that Iran or the P5 plus one got what they wanted. This is more of a compromise from both sides. And certainly there will be things on both, ends of, um, both sides of the table that uh, many will look at and say, wow, I'm not sure we should have done that. And certainly reports are coming in from uh, Israel that uh, Mr. Netanyahu maintains that this is a horrible deal. And he will continue to do so in the months ahead. And, you know, whether or not it is as bad as Mr. Netanyahu proclaims, I have a feeling that he is uh, positioning himself along with the moderate Arab League to reap some type of benefit, and I believe that they will reap benefits. In fact, I was reading an article by the New York Times that that will be the next step for the Obama administration. And here's what the article has to say. It says, Mr. Obama will also have to manage the breach, Mr. Netanyahu, and the leaders of Saudi Arabia and other Arab states who have warned against the deal, saying the relief of sanctions will ultimately empower the Iranians uh, empower the Iranians throughout the Middle East. So frankly, this is the part of the deal that I'm really uh, concerned about, and really what I have been looking for. I mean, this Iran deal, without if unless it leads to a peace with many that includes Israel that lasts for seven years, this Iran, uh, Iranian deal has little significance as far as Bible prophecy is concerned, anyway. So we as prophecy watchers need to look for the next step that comes, and that is how this peace with many will be developed if, in fact, this is connected with the prophetic Daniel 9.27 uh, prophecy. And certainly I think it is, 
But right now, it is uh, from early indications this agreement takes us on into 10 to 15 years. So I'm not sure at this point in time how something is going to be developed where seven years will come into play. And there's certainly something that you might need to think about, and that is, yes, the Bible does say that uh, it will be a seven-year agreement, but at the halfway point will be broken. Now, whether or not that will be known to the public or that it will be known as a seven-year agreement is unknown. I mean, God could be letting us know that it will be seven years, but at three, at the three-and-a-half point, year point, that this, this agreement will be broken. It could be a long-term agreement. That could be uh, 10, 15 years. But after three and a half years, it's broken. And the fact that the, the tribulation period lasts for seven years, it's saying that, hey, listen, this, this, this uh, agreement could last for 10 to 15 or whatever amount of years. But three and a half years into it, the Antichrist will break the agreement and the tribulation period will go on another three and a half years, making it a seven-year tribulation period. Now, whether or not that is uh, true or not, whatever the case may be, uh, that's speculation on my part. I am of the mind that it will be a seven-year agreement that will be stated, and of that seven, seven years, at the midway point, it will be broken. That has been the traditional way of thinking for many, many years, and I will not uh, try to convince anyone that it's going to be anything other than that. But that's just something that very well could be a possibility uh, as we move, move forward. But as we know, the tribulation period begins with a peace with many agreement in which the Antichrist will confirm uh, with many. But this agreement will have to include Israel. Right now, the many are already uh, in the, uh, the picture. I mean, the representatives that are there, of course, we have the uh, P5 plus one. Uh, they represent many countries. But I believe the Arab world and Israel will have to be brought in. Of course, we know Israel definitely has to be brought into this type of agreement. But when this agreement does come to pass, it will, uh, that will spark the beginning of the tribulation period. But there's another indicator that will also come about. In fact, there's actually two. When you see these two indications or indicators along with a peace with many, you know you're in the tribulation period. And the other two are, number one, there will be two witnesses who will start preaching on the streets of Jerusalem and they will not be able to be killed. They will perform miraculous miracles and the whole world will know of their existence. Because Revelation chapter 11 speaks of their death. It says the whole world uh, saw their death and celebrated by giving gifts like it was Christmas. Well, that's number two. Number three, there must be a temple rebuilt. So the temple in Jerusalem must be rebuilt. In fact, the Antichrist cannot declare himself to be God until this temple is created. You know, I get a lot of messages and a lot of comments from those who do not believe that a pre-tribulation rapture will take place, that Christians will go through the tribulation period. And my, say, and my same uh, comment to them is always, if I do make a comment, let me know when the tribulation period starts because these three things have to be prominent. And right now, no temple has been built. There are no witnesses uh, that, are made, that are doing miraculous Miracles in the streets of Jerusalem, they're not, that's, that hasn't taken place yet, nor has a seven year peace treaty or confirmation of a treaty been brokered uh, in which Israel and many are included. So you can, you know, you can keep, you can keep uh, talking about the Christians will go through the tribulation period, but the tribulation period has to start first. So you let me know when that happens. And, you know, the one thing that these people c uh, continue to forget. And I, and I talk about this every single video, is that I have a tribulation period survival guide. The peop, You people who listen to my reports, if you have my tribulation period survival guide, and you can get it, it's, read, it's read, uh, readily available, it's free in fact, all you have to do is download it, or you can buy it, you know, there's, I think it costs seven, eight dollars uh, on my website, and that gives you a paperback version. But what I'm trying to say is that you have the ability to have a tribulation period survival guide in your hands. And this going alongside of the Bible tells you how to survive the tribulation period. So we pre-tribulation rapture believers are actually more prepared than those who believe that they're going to go through the tribulation period. I have never, you know, uh, uh, it, it shocks me. Of all the comments that I receive, but yet there is no tribulation period survival guide that is in great detail of how to survive the tribulation period by those who believe we're going through the tribulation period. 
it took a person such as myself who believes in a pre-tribulation rapture to create a tribulation period survival guide. So that tells me right there they really don't believe what they're saying. Because if I truly believed that Christians were going through the tribulation period, I'd go out and create a tribulation period survival guide. And I'd make this book readily available to everybody I possibly could. But anyway, enough of that. Um, what I see for the future is that the next phase, I believe that uh, not only the, uh, the uh, U.S. government, but also the European Union will engage in a campaign to try to get both Israel and the Arab League on board with this agreement. And as I've said many times, I believe that there will be financial, economic, and military incentives that will be brought forth to these countries that will make them feel like they are secure. And even though it looks as though the United States is heading up this uh, campaign, once the rapture of the church takes place, things will change dramatically. And it's something that we need to take consideration, there may be a time span of a few months, years, whatever, in between the start or the uh, rapture of the church and the start of the tribulation period. And then the uh, Antichrist will rise up. I don't know how he's going to rise up, but the Bible says he'll rise up out of a ten-nation conglomerate who will lend their power to him. Now, whether or not he will be the representative who will stand with the P5 and ultimately rise to the top is unknown. I don't know how that's going to work out. But it will work out once the rapture takes place. That's when it will develop. This world will go from a natural to a supernatural world. And he will bring about a confirmation of a peace accord that's been going on for a while. Now, whether or not it will be part of this Iranian deal or it will stand alone on its own uh, with the modern Arab world and the Palestinians that will create a state. But I have to believe that at some point in time that all of this will have to come under an umbrella agreement for the Middle East. And in doing so, it will have to convince the world that uh, because of this umbrella deal, that the world as a whole will be a safer place. So we'll have to keep an eye on and see how this develops and where it goes. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You know, this world is not going to continue as it is for much longer. But before that, you could die. You know, the Bible says there's a point on a man wants to die, then the judgment. Once you die, once you leave this world, you're going to stand before God. And when you do, the only thing that's going to matter is if you accept the Lord as Savior. Have you made that commitment today? If not, you stand a, you stand a, a, a chance of dying. And by dying, you will stand before God. So I would encourage you today to make that decision to accept Jesus as Savior. You know, He died for you. He died to pay your sin penalty. He rose again. Now it's up to you. Your sins are already paid for, but you have to accept that free gift. Today I want you to pray and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, to accept that free gift, believe that He died on the cross, and that He rose again, and that He is your Savior. And then go out and confess it amongst men or women. That in a nutshell is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I hope that you've made that decision. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.